This is the fifth and final section of chapter two on measures of location and spread. And this section is on coding. So what is coding? Well, coding is a way of making calculations for the mean and standard deviation easier. Now we can make the calculations easier by making the data values smaller. So the way we do this is by using this formula. We take our original data, we subtract a value from that original data and divide it by uh, a number to give us what we call our coded data. Next, what we do with this coded data, these new set of numbers, which should be easier to deal with, is that we find the mean and standard deviation of the coded data. So that would be Y bar, because these are now gonna be Y values instead of X values, and the standard deviation of Y. Now the next step is to actually decode the values that I've just worked out, y bar and the standard deviation of y, to find the mean and the standard deviation of the original data. So the decoding is going to look like this. So basically we've worked out the uh, mean of y. If we times it by b and then add a, we get the mean of our original data x. Now if we take the standard deviation of this coded data y and we times it by b, we get the standard deviation of the original data x. Now notice we just times by b, there is no need to add a because um, a does not change the spread of the data. So if you've got a set of data values and let's say you've got the numbers one to 10 and you work out the spread and you've got the numbers 101 to 110 and work out the spread, you get the same value. Adding 100 to the numbers makes no difference. So we need to make sure that we don't add this on. We just times by B, because this is the only thing that's going to affect the spread of the uh, data, the coded data. Adding A doesn't make any difference. So we don't add A on to this part here for the standard deviation. Example 10, a scientist measures the temperature X degrees centigrade at five different points in a nuclear reactor. The results are given below. Part A, use the coding y equals x minus 100 over 10 to code this data. Right, so we're gonna take each one of those values, these x values, we're gonna take away 300 from them and divide them by 10. So we'll do that for each one. So next one's 355. Minus 300 divided by 10, 306. Minus 300 divided by 10, 317. Minus 300 divided by 10. And then the last one, 340 minus 300 divided by 10. So that gives us these coded values, these Y values, which we're gonna use in the calculation. So 3.2, 5.5, 0 0.6, 1.7, and 4.0. So can you see these numbers are much smaller than these numbers here? So hopefully doing calculations on these should be easier than doing calculations on these numbers here. So part B, we're gonna calculate the mean and standard deviation of these. So we're gonna calculate Y bar so that's going to be 3.2 plus 5.5 plus 0 0.6 plus 1.7 plus 4.0 divided by 5, because we've got 5 data values. That gives us 15 divided by 5. So we've got a value of y bar as 3. Now to calculate the standard deviation, uh, we are going to need um n that's nice and easy so n is going to be five but we also need the sum of these numbers squared so that's going to be the sum of y bar or sorry just y squared not y bar so that's going to be 3.2 squared plus 5.5 squared plus 0.6 squared plus 1.7 squared plus 4.0 squared that gives 
59.74. So now we can um, put that into our working. Actually, let's just write down here our answers. So we've got the mean as three, and now we're gonna work out the standard deviation of y as well. So that's going to be the square root of sum of y squared, 59.74, divided by the sum of f, sorry, n, which is five, minus the mean squared. Okay, well, we've worked out the mean, that's three. So just minus three squared. All right, so that gives us 1.7. 1, 6, 9, 7, so on. Three significant figures, so we'll round that to 1.72. 1.72, three significant figures. Right, part C of this question says, use your answer to part B to calculate the mean and standard deviation of the original data. Right, so the mean of the original data, which we'll call X bar, is going to be equal to the coded mean, which is three, times by what we divided by, which is 10, plus what we subtracted, which was 300. So we add 300. So that's just going to be 30 plus 300, so 330. Now, what was it the mean of? The mean of temperatures, so 330 degrees. And to find the standard deviation of the original data, we take our coded standard deviation and then we just multiply it by what's effectively B. So we just times it by 10. So that will give us 17.2. And uh, that's in degrees as well, and both degrees Celsius. And we've rounded that to three. That's three significant figures because the previous one was three significant figures. And in fact, if we took the full number there and rounded it by, um, times it by 10, we'd get like 17.16. So it, it rounds to the same thing, 17.2. Example 11. From a large data set, data on the maximum gusts in G knots is recorded in ledgers during May and June 2015. The data was coded using this and the following statistics found. SHH 43.5H, the mean of H2 and N61. Calculate the mean and the standard deviation of the ma maximum gust in knots. Now you may be looking at this, I'm wondering, oh, I've not seen that before. What does that mean? Now this comes from the variance. Another way of calculating the variance is to use this thing called SXX over n. Now, for now, you just need to know this relationship here, but you'll look at this in more detail if you were to do further statistics two in further maths. So we can use this. The only difference is this is h because the data is h. So I can say that the variance of h is equal to this shh over n. So the variance of h is equal to 43.58 divided by n, which is 61. Now in this question, I want the standard deviation. So the standard deviation of h is going to be the square root of this 43.58 divided by 61. It just gives a much quicker way of working out the uh, variance if we know this relationship here. So this gives us 0.84523. Now I'm going to leave it like that because I need to decode it in a minute. And then the other thing that I have here, I have the mean of H. I'm going to turn that into the mean of G. So let's write that down. So let's start with this. So the mean of H, if I times it by 10 and add five, I'm going to get the mean of G. So the mean of G is equal to the mean of H, which is two times by 10. 
and plus five. So the mean of the of these maximum gusts in knots is going to be 25. So 25 knots. And then the last thing I want to do is to decode the standard deviation. So I know that if I take the standard deviation of H and I multiply it by 10, I don't need to add five. I'm going to get the standard deviation of G, the maximum gust. So let's do that. So the standard deviation of G is going to be equal to this value here times by 10. So 0.84523 times by 10. And that will give me, let's write down the full thing, 8.4523. So three significant figures. Standard deviation of the maximum gust is 8.45. And that's knots. And that is given to three significant figures. So we'll just highlight that there. So you should now be able to do exercise 2F on pages 34 to 36 of the textbook.